Welcome back to AZH Wound Center in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and I'm your humble correspondent for this edition of the Wound Care Window, Dr. Jeffrey Nisgoda. Thanks for joining us. Many times on Wound Care Window, we will do a single segment, a procedure, a technology, and that's it. We forget about it. <clears throat> I wanted to share this patient in the start of the new year with a little different approach. We show your initial management and then how he actually responds over the next couple of weeks. This is a patient that you can see has developed a diabetic foot ulcer. It's actually a wagner through with some underlying osteomyelitis. He's on aggressive antibiotic therapy for that. We're treating the wound in our standard fashion. If you notice that there's significant callus buildup around this wound, which is part of the problem. <clears throat> he also has some callus up uh, here that's uh, developing, uh, truly related to uh, inadequate offloading. We're gonna address that with a total contact cast. And we'll show you that in just a little bit, but first of all, we'll start off with uh, <clears throat> some debridement of the callus. Taking my favorite tool, the curette, and we're gonna come through that very thick callus. You can tell that this margin will never heal in its current fashion. That tissue will not allow epithelization across the wound base. We need to saucerize this, get rid of those calloused margins, and get down to a plane of healing that will facilitate epithelization of the wound base. Obviously, we need to promote the granulation tissue, and we'll do that through a variety of topicals. <clears throat> but the bane of a diabetic's existence is the development of this callus. There are neuropathic ulcers, are insensate. They don't appreciate the amount of callus that they're actually walking on. <clears throat> this can be due to trauma or just inadequate offloading. We'll take that callus down and allow better development of granulation bed and then eventual epithelialization. <clears throat> so debridement is important, but offloading is also critical, and that's where the total contact cast will come in. You see the tissue bleeds fairly readily. That's a good thing. And again, we're taking out all the margins, saucerizing the wound base. Here we'll come back and get that fibrinous layer. Nice, healthy, bleeding wound base. So we've debrided fairly nicely. And typically these uh, ulcers would, will stop with a little bit of uh, pressure hemostasis. Uh, rarely do they require cauterization. <clears throat> One of the other tricks that you can use, that we'll probably deploy here, is the use of a little ORC collagen. With some Prismon, it does have hemostatic properties. <clears throat> that should control the bleeding rather nicely. Let's take a look at our hemostasis. See, it's dried up nicely. What I'm going to do is use the trick of <clears throat> the collagen ORC. Put that down. And further our hemostatic result. Cover a little Vosh uh, soaked gauze. That'll be good to go. So now, let's turn our attention to this other area of callus. And for this callus, I oftentimes will use a Dremel. This device works very well at taking this callus out. You can see the fissures inside that callus. That's a problem. Callus will oftentimes be very hard and split with the current repetitive traumatic episodes, such as what you see with this daily walking. By taking that callus down, allow that tissue to heal, moisturize the skin, and prevent it from coming back, prevent it from becoming a problem. Sometimes it's hard to gauge the depth of the callus. I find that by actually just feeling it with my finger, I can gauge when this becomes the softest the rest of the skin. Still quite firm, and keep going a little bit. <clears throat> the Dremel will heat the tissue, so you also have to monitor that. You don't want to be too aggressive, go too long, or use too much pressure, because that will heat the tissues and cause a thermal injury. 
certainly want to try to avoid that. Short little bursts of the Dremel though is very safe. You can see it's already looking 100% better. The fortunate thing is, is we're not finding any ulceration under this area of callus. Just about down to the point where it stopped. As we get down through the callus, you notice there's some areas of dark tissue that's actually hemorrhaged in the callus or under the callus. And that can certainly lead to a pre-ulcerative condition. This demonstrates uh, the impact that callus accumulation in a diabetic can uh, put them at risk for ulcer development. That's why attention to foot, not only at the ulcer site, but elsewhere in the body is important. Maintain this callus in a preventative fashion, prevent for the patient from having an ulcerative process to them. That actually is very soft now, and we're in pretty good shape. We'll go ahead and stop there. So I hope you've enjoyed this edition of the Wound Care Window and our discussion of treatment of callus and the appropriate techniques and offloading and the importance of offloading in the management of these patients. We're gonna be back in a week or two to show you the progress that we've achieved with this uh, really proven successful therapy. Thank you very much, see you next time.